boiler. More like water. Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondiax. Today's the day. You've all been waiting for it. I've been waiting for it. We are going to run my latest model steam engine project on live steam with a real boiler for the first time ever. It's going to be super fun, I think. We're going to see this engine run on the awesome raw power of boiled water so it can do real work. No tricks, no compressed air toys. This is the real deal. Let's go. Here's the boiler that's going to be making our horsepower today. This is an electric steam boiler that I built many years ago, and it's a little rough around the edges, but it is going to do the job for me today. This is my sort of bench testing boiler. Now, I recently did a bit of a refurb on this boiler, and I have one little task that I need to do before we can make steam with it, so bear with me here. I need to connect up the electrical underneath. I had cut these wires to disassemble the boiler, so I want to put a couple of bullet connectors in here so that I can disconnect these wires later if I need to. So I bought this set of quick disconnect connectors off of Amazon and holy cow are they garbage. Like these are the worst crimp connectors I have ever seen. The metal contacts are just like aluminum foil and the insulating shells are just paper thin. They deform just by touching them. Honestly, this entire set went right in the trash. I could not get any kind of decent results out of them. I'm not one to just throw stuff away. There's always some use you can find for some product, no matter how bad it is. This might be the worst product I've ever bought in my life, and I won't insult your intelligence by linking to this set. Now, lest you think I don't know my way around crimp connectors, I use only a torque-controlled ratcheting crimping tool with two stage dies, and I've wired three cars from scratch, two of which were endurance race cars, and I have never had a crimped connection fail. And yet, I tried to save a few bucks on that crappy connector set, which I now regret, and I went and got a proper set of Molexes, and these properly crimped, you will never pull apart. So I gotta get this uh, heat shrink off of here. I had soldered these connections previously, and the wires were of course too short after cutting them, so rather than trying to extend them, I just pulled new wires from the uh, electrical box in there. These wires connect the thermostat, the thermo switch sensor at one end, to the uh, AC contactor in the box there that runs the heating element inside the boiler. The next little job is to connect the boiler to the engine, and I do have a rigid steam pipe that I built for this boiler, and they're nice because they're efficient and they don't leak, but uh, they're not very convenient, and this is an engine that I haven't run before, so I thought I'd just rig up a piece of silicone hose instead because that's quick and easy. So I need to adapt this hose to the fitting on the engine, so it's time for the obligatory plumbing fixture portion of a steam engine video. I'll start by facing this off. And I'm not going to say, as is tradition, I am not a monkey here to dance for your entertainment. Oh wait, actually that's exactly why I'm here, isn't it? Alright. As is tradition. I'm going to drill this through, and you can see the drill wobbling all over. This had a hole in it already from some previous operation, and of course that hole is no longer concentric, because I've put it back in the chuck in a different orientation, and the drill's wobbling. But it's fine, save your comments. I'll tap one end quarter 40 to fit on the engine, and then on the other end I'm going to just cut a smooth area and I'm going to make a kind of a barbed fitting to hold the hose here at this end. So I want to do it all in one setup, and I can do that with this little trick with the grooving tool. Just make a couple of plunges and then pan your way back across with the grooving tool, which you can do if you're only taking a couple thou depth of cut. And then I'll just kind of freehand a little barb here in the middle. That'll work probably just fine. And then light chamfer on things. And... Yahtzee. Well, that looks like it's not, not gonna work. Let's give it a shot. So put some Loctite 545 on there. Or as I like to call it, the lousy machinist compensator fluid. Finger tight is sufficient, the Loctite will do the rest. And that is a nice tight fit on that hose, that looks good. And then I'll just put a zip tie on there for a little bit of clamping. This is all low pressure stuff, so it shouldn't need more than that. And now it's time to fill it up. So I opened the steam valve there to let the air out, and I'll fill it up until I start to see the level register on the water gauge. Okay, we're ready for steam. Now on something like a coal-fired boiler, the process now involves kindling and paraffin and building a fire and adjusting the damper and various other things. This being an electric boiler, the firing process consists of that.
While we wait for some steam to build, I'm going to lubricate the engine. Many viewers suggested I pack these oilers with cotton to slow them down a little bit, so I'm going to try that. I got a little piece of string in there, and I'll top all of these up. The ones on the cross light in particular were pretty greedy, so the cotton might help there. And I'll just run things around a little bit, make sure all the bearings and everything are lubricated. Now let's get some steam oil in the displacement lubricator. This guy hasn't been used yet, so I'm pretty excited to see how it works. So I'll top this up with steam cylinder oil, which is different, of course, than the oil that I used on all the bearings and everything. See my video on steam engine lubrication for more about this. Starting to show some pressure on the gauge now. This thing takes about 15 minutes to steam up fully to 30 PSI, which is where I run it. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it is nice that it doesn't make any kind of smoke or fumes or anything. With pressure on the clock, let's give it a whirl. So I'm gonna crack the steam valve here and give the engine a little crank by hand, push the water through. Everything's still cold, so the steam's gonna condense, but yeah, I'm just getting nothing but water here. This boiler does tend to prime pretty badly if you overfill it even slightly, so I think I'm going to have to blow it down a little bit and get that water level down. Let's try that again now. Crack the valve. Once again, we're going to get a little bit of water till the cylinder heats up, but we'll be able to push that through by hand. Run that water through. Going to need a little more pressure here, I think. Oh, there. Signs of life. Still more water coming. Oh, there. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There we go. My zip tie hose fittings are leaking a lot, as you can see, but the engine does sputter to life on live steam. First time ever for this engine. Pretty exciting. After a brief run, I decided to do something about those leaks. So I don't have any tiny hose clamps, so I'll do a farmer's hose clamp here instead. Some stiff wire, give it a twist, and that should suffice. I did that at both ends and that is running much better and no leaks there at that connection anymore. There's still some water on the steam chest there boiling off from before, but it's not actively leaking anymore. And the one on the boiler is still leaking a little. It's fine. It's going to be fine. You can see that the inboard head there is leaking as well. There's steam bubbling around a couple of the bolts and also that gasket there. That gasket is clearly not made very well and things might need tightening up a little bit. There's nothing like steam to show you all your leaks. You can play around with compressed air all you want and think everything is tight. Until you run steam, you really don't know. After a couple of minutes, I decided to stop and see if my displacement lubricator is working. You can see steam pressure bubbling out of there, pushing the oil out, so that's working. And let's check the drain, and yeah, water came out of that, and so the displacement lubricator does seem to be working. There's definitely oil in the exhaust, so seems like everything is okay there. Cylinders should be lubricated. I started with the Keith Appleton recommendation of closing it all the way and then opening it one full turn, and that seemed just fine. I think I opened it another half turn just to be paranoid. And it's fun to see how slow it'll run. You can see that a couple of my fittings there are still leaking around the uh, lubricator there and uh, on the intake there. So, you know, a lot of those joints don't have Loctite on them yet because they're all going to come apart again here in a minute anyway. Well, that worked out great, and I'm going to shut the engine down now. So 
Ironically, water is very bad for steam engines. So you got to get rid of all the water once you're done. So to do that, I'm pumping WD-40 through it. Just a couple of cycles of that. And that gets rid of the worst of it. And then I'll run some compressed air in there to dry everything out. And then the last thing I do is dump a bunch of steam oil in there and then apply a little more compressed air to run that oil through until I see oil and no water coming out of the exhaust. So there's still lots more to do on this engine. It's gonna come apart and get painted and get a base and lots more fun things to do with it. But it's running on live steam now for the first time and I'm really, really excited about it. I hope you enjoyed this little steam up. Thank you very much for watching. If you like these videos, throw me a little love on Patreon there, and I will see you next time.